Hello again, welcome back to my series on Makai Kingdom. Uh, in today's episode, I've got several things to talk about, so let's pull up our file here. So, the last video I uploaded, if you watched it, um, I had I was doing some uh, level 1 free dungeons because there were two specific things that I wanted to unlock. Uh, and I managed to make a video on one of them, but then um, I, I started recording when I found the thing that I was looking for, and it's just a short seven minute video just showing that I um, I unlocked, uh, I'll just show you here. Great character, great now. I unlocked these guys. This is our 13th and final basic monster job class. Uh, they're called Big Eye, or in the strategy guide, they're called Manosphere. Um, so we unlocked that, that's great. Um, so after that episode, I continued saves coming, um, you know, level one free dungeons looking for, uh, something else. And I found it and I tried to record a video, but my screen capture software messed up and it only recorded the audio and like the first frame of the video. So I've got the video. I don't know if I want to upload it or not because it's, it, it sounds stupid. It's just, you know, me talking over one frame of video for like seven minutes or whatever um so i don't know i'm i'm i might upload it i don't know but anyway so the thing that i was looking for um let's see anyone the thing that i was no not you the thing i was looking for let's see if i can find it where are you there you are this this is a box uh, I was able to find it in a level one free dungeon. I don't feel particularly bad about the fact that I did that off camera because I've got another video where I, uh, it's another video. The first time I do a level one free dungeon, I found a drum, I found a syringe, I found a frying pan. So I think that adequately demonstrates that you can find interesting um, weapons on the ground in free dungeon that ordinarily don't show up until later chapters. Uh, I've demonstrated that principle, so I don't feel all that bad about the fact that I got this off screen. Um, I, um, this box actually, uh, normally I find them lying on the ground when I do this, uh, but in this instance, I act, it spawned in, it was equipped to an enemy. Uh, on the 10th floor, there was a, uh, it was a boss and he just happened to have a box equipped. So I just stole it and, you know, completed the stage and left. And that's how I got my hands on this box. Uh, so we got, we got both of the things that we wanted. Um, and uh, now we're at an interesting point in the game. Uh, and that's because uh, the way that I think about Makai Kingdom, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we are now in the end game. Uh, and, um, I'll tell you why, and then I'll be demonstrating what I'm about to tell you over the next couple of videos. Um, the way that I think about Makai Kingdom and the way that I think about the post game is that there are three or four criteria, and uh, once you've met them, you can basically make yourself as strong as you want to be without relying on any real randomization without having to, you know, uh, hunt for powerful items in random dungeons or anything like that. The process of becoming stronger uh, basically just becomes uh, repetitive button pushing. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll break it down for you. So um, let's see. All right. So there are characters, items, vehicles, and um, facilities in Makai Kingdom. The way you make your character stronger is by leveling them up and um, uh, accumulating stored stars and stored levels. Uh, we can do that by farming 3-4 for starred items. That's as, uh, as far as I know, that's the most efficient way to do it. It's, you go in, you destroy the facility, you're done You know, in seconds. And you'll get on average like two starred items in, in the bonus list. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, so that's the quickest way to store stars. And then you just, uh, these generic units, you just have them wish for facilities at level one over and over again to accumulate stored stars. 
uh, no problem. Um, for experience, um, actually, you know what? I, f I forgot to explain. Okay, um, so the reason I say that we're um, in the end game is because of uh, three or four specific things we've accomplished. I think I alluded to that earlier. Uh, so let me start from there. A bit of a faux pas, but I'm, I'm going to keep going. I'm not, I'm not going to make this a bad take. So the three or four things that you need to accomplish in order to be in what I consider the end game. Uh, the first is to unlock Chef. Uh, we did that. That that was the first one of these that we did. Unlocking Chef gives you access to food markets, which gives you access to um, food that you can farm quickly and easily. And it also gives you access to the Chef's uh, times two food experience multiplier. Uh, that is huge for um, experience. Huge for farming experience, which means huge for making your character stronger and accumulating stored levels, which makes your characters even stronger. So unlocking Chef is huge. Uh, the second is a level 100 character, level 100 or higher. Uh, and the reason um, getting to level 100 is such a huge milestone is because uh, at level 100 or higher, you can wish for food dungeons. Before level 100, you can't do it. So this level 128 Swordmaster we've got here, that's a big deal. Okay. The third thing uh, that you need in order to be in post game, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is um, the thing I just showed you. Where is it? The box weapon. Uh, and I'll explain why right now. Um, and we're going to cover this later in a mana farming video. Box, uh, box class weapons are extremely important for farming mana. And the reason for that is because when you hit something with a box weapon skill, it applies a, a bonus multiplier to the target uh, that works um, identically to the experience multipliers that you get from food. Uh, you remember in our early video, we um, in the video where we exploited Happy Dungeon 1, we were able to build up to a times 50 experience multiplier. Imagine being able to do that, but for mana. That's what the box gives you access to. That's why they are important. That's why um, it's worthwhile to do a uh, level one free dungeon until you find one. And uh, this is the third and um, out of three or four uh, things that I consider to be keys to the post game. Um, and then the fourth, which is kind of optional, is uh, the other thing that I was hunting for in free dungeons, and that's just, uh, let me show you again. Great character. This class here. Uh, this is kind of optional, kind of, kind of, um, kind of like an optimization. Um, I definitely recommend getting this unlocked, and I'll tell you why. These units, um, Manosphere units, or Cyclops, or whatever you want to call them, uh, when they are killed, they award an abnormally high amount of mana. Um, the uh, According to the official strategy guide, this first tier has a mana when killed value of like 40, uh, whereas most units I think have like 11 or 12 or something like that. Uh, this one has less. But uh, these things... Uh, award an absolutely ridiculous amount of mana when killed compared to absolutely any other job class of units in the game. Uh, they are comparable to facilities. Uh, facilities, uh, I mean, they're pretty much toe-in-toe -toe with facilities. The sixth tier of this class uh, is called Entity, and uh, in the strategy guide, the value, uh, the, the mana when killed value for that class is 65, which is tied with castles. Uh, and they're tied as the highest value when killed uh, target in the game. Um, so they're worth unlocking, they're worth um, using as tools for generating mana, and um, they are what I consider the fourth and final key to the post game. Um, so um, what I'm going to be doing in subsequent videos is uh, demonstrating what I just said. I mean, we, we've got everything we need to start really reaching just absolutely ridiculous, uh, ridiculously high levels uh, in pretty short order, ridiculous uh, levels of power, um, 
and uh, we're going to start doing the uh, yeah I guess we are going to start doing like the post game content um, so yeah um, that's gonna be the next few videos I think the order I'm gonna do it in is that the next video will be about unlocking some classes uh, the one after that will be about farming mana and the one after that will be about food dungeons uh, and then the one after that will probably be about uh, actually clearing some um, post-game content I think uh, yeah let's do this Okay, yeah, we're already starting to see that we've got access to a couple of the first uh, uh, secret battles that you have to wish for. So that'll be uh, further on down the line, we'll do those. Uh, but I want to uh, just quick reminder, uh, let's, see, let's save. So here's our save file. We're less than seven hours in, and we are in what I consider uh, the post game, like I've already said. Um, we are... Uh, you know, a bit of mana farming and one food dungeon away from just being able to, like, slaughter most of the stuff in the game. Um, not everything. The difficult battles are, like, Zeta and the Yoshitsuna and, you know, like, the Super Robo Suit. Um, but though, I mean, you know, like, two to four food dungeons and you can knock those out. So we really are, I mean, we're, we're basically here. This is the post game. So in the, in the next couple of videos, I'm just going to be showing you what the post game is like. Um, and that's about it. So look forward to that. Um, I'm going to be doing that in future videos. So tune in. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.